I'm here with Dominic Weeks on the Zero Avia stand. Dominic, I wonder if you could outline the Zero Avia proposition and the products you have. Yeah, absolutely. So we're a Californian founded company about uh, five years ago. We initially started from a first principles premise. So let's look at all of the different potential future technologies for aviation propulsion because we absolutely have to solve uh, the emissions challenge in aviation. For us, it became apparent that we need to get to electrification to have as far reaching environmental um, impact as possible. But batteries essentially will be too heavy for commercial applications. So fuel cells provides the opportunity to store hydrogen on board the aircraft as the fuel, so you can store the energy in the hydrogen, and you can use the fuel cell to convert that to electricity. Very efficient, 60% efficiency uh, in some cases, and then essentially use the electricity to power electric motors like the one behind me. They turn the propeller and, and fly the aircraft. There are lots of almost limitless potential with the technology that's being developed around hydrogen fuel cell and electric uh, propulsion systems. But in the initial stages, we need to get something in market so people see it, they can fly on it, and we can start tackling the emissions uh, as soon as possible. The easiest way to do that is to develop a system that can be retrofit into existing airframes so we don't have to certify a whole new aircraft. And the idea is we would take those many thousands of aircraft that are flying today, uh, retrofit them with these cleaner systems and, and have an impact as soon as possible. If you look at the vision that the Alliance for Zero Emission Aviation produced um, from the EU, um, they're looking at 68% of flights in an ambitious scenario could be hydrogen or electric propulsion by 2050. But it shows you that this technology is coming, it will be adopted and, and it will be making a meaningful contribution to emissions reduction. What have been some of the biggest challenges in bringing this new propulsion technology to market? Yeah, I mean, there's the technical challenges because this is not trivial engineering. You know, we've taken, um, in the first instance, um, systems that at a general level are, are quite well understood, such as low temperature PEM fuel cells, compressed hydrogen storage, and then we've made that aerospace relevant by reducing the space and weight required for those systems. When we think about larger aircraft, we need to make uh, further advances in the underlying technology. So uh, we've developed uh, in-house a high temperature PEM fuel cell um, concept and stacks, which we're going to manufacture, and what that allows us to do is uh, improve the specific power power to weight ratio of those systems. But for larger aircraft, we need to improve that volumetric uh, energy storage. And so we look to move to liquid hydrogen. And then we also have to think about um, you know, some of the policy challenges as well. So there's been a lot of focus on SAF, but ultimately it's only gonna go a certain amount of the journey and it's gonna be ex more expensive. Uh, so getting this technology certified uh, and having the political will to do that as soon as possible is also hugely important for us. Where does your product fit with eVTOLs? Yeah, I would give a nod to our um, our friends at Joby Aviation. Obviously, they're one of the leading eVTOL companies. They just tested a really amazing flight test uh, on liquid hydrogen uh, with a fuel cell, uh, which took the uh, aircraft you know, 500 miles. And I think what that says to the eVTOL community is that if you look at longer range uh, applications for small passenger numbers, uh, you know, batteries are going to be very difficult. Um, not only have you got the weight restrictions that limit range, you also have high cycling costs. So I think that's made people sit up and, and think about uh, hydrogen fuel cell application for eVTOL. What's the process of refueling? Yeah with your system? We're looking at hydrogen fuel. Um, you know, likely it's produced with electrolytic uh, hydrogen, so you, you need new infrastructure there. We think it's the ultimate um, aim is to produce it near site or on site airports to reduce transportation. Uh, you don't want to be trucking in high volumes of hydrogen because it is a high volume intensity fuel. Um, and then we're looking at, um, you know, kind of a traditional bowser to the aircraft, uh, refueled, you've got a fixed tank on the airframe. We think that's the easiest option and the most economically uh, sensible. How much more environmentally friendly travelling with uh, a plane powered with your system is compared to a conventional jet engine? We can significantly, plus 90% or above, uh, reduce the climate impacts of, this, of flying. There are methods in which you could tackle the water vapour for higher altitude operations. That is the only emission, of course. Uh, so you're removing all the NOx, um, nitrogen oxides. 
Yeah, you're removing the soot, the particulate matter that contribute to not just control formation, but then also have air quality impacts. And then there are potentially engineering solutions for managing that water vapor exhaust uh, for jet engine applications in the future. A great study by the University of Southampton, which was part of the ATI Fly Zero report, which found that fuel cell uh, hydrogen operation could be you know, significantly quieter. So I think if you look at the research that's been done on whether people trust the concepts of hydrogen for aviation, yeah, pretty, pretty good. On the fundamentals, there's a lot to actually be relatively excited about because um, to think that it could be as safe or safer potentially uh, than kerosene uh, flight because hydrogen dissipates very quickly, it's the lightest molecule so it won't pool. You essentially have um, you know, very robust tanks and compressed, compressed hydrogen systems and uh, it's got a higher ignition temperature than, than uh, kerosene. So yeah, lots of reasons to think that hydrogen can be handled safely in aerospace as it is in industry today, you know, all across the world in very high volumes. Dominic, could you outline for me your timeline to certification? Yeah, so we're, with a 600 kilowatt system, we're looking at certification in the next couple of years. And then for the larger uh, engine for aircraft, um, 40 to 80 seats, again, another couple of years there on. So 2027, 2028 is when we're targeting. But there is a big push behind the hydrogen aviation. We're just one of the players doing that. We like to think we're the leading player. We have 2,000 engine orders from the likes of American, United, Alaska. And actually this week at um, the air show, we announced a, a partnership with KLM, initially as a demonstrator, um, but to show what's possible in terms of uh, moving regional aviation to zero emission. Dominic, thanks so much for outlining the products of Zero RVSA. It's been fantastic talking to you. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, Nat. It's been great. Cheers. Bye-bye.